So let's start with our reverse polish. Okay. RPN, RPN is actually reverse, reverse polish rotation. Polish, polish is, is in the polish, polish from Poland. Poland. Okay. So uh, a person, person who suggested this. Actually, you would have to understand it in terms of simple expression. Let's say you have A plus B. We call this A plus B in fixed rotation with respect to its operator. Its operator is in between two operands. A and B are operand and plus is operator. Mathematical operator. If the mathematical operator is in between, it is said to be in fix. If the mathematical operator is before it, that is called prefix. If the mathematical operator is after it, it is called postfix. Now, terminologies are attached with the action. If we are reading, we are reading in order post order or pre order if we are writing we are writing infix postfix or prefix they both are same what does that mean that means that this is post order a b plus what we human understand is in order and this one is the order where this mathematical sign is showing up before operands now think of it like this tree. This is called root. At root, only operators appear. What appear? Operator. Left operand, right operand. Everywhere where we have root, we would have one operator at the root. So A plus B. So this is left, right, root. If it is in order, it means left, root, and right. If it is post order, we are reading now, not writing. We are reading now. So it is left, right, root. And if it is pre order, it is root, left, right. It's all written here. Root, left, and right. This post order is called RPN, reverse Polish notation. This post order is called what? Reverse Polish notation. Now, we have got a chart. We will follow this chart or map or flow chart, whatever you call it. So, first, we will be given infix which is the system that we use, we would have to convert it to the binary tree. So infix of this uh, binary tree of this infix notation is this A plus B. We have to first convert to infix, sorry, uh, to binary tree. From binary tree, we will read it post order. Post order is actually reverse polish notation or RPN. So we will convert it to uh, postfix, means we will write it to postfix format. And then we will stack it up, means stack data structure. We will, from postfix, 
we will put it to the stack now we are solving it there are two kind of expression one with variables constants if it is just 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 6 this needs to be sorted out this needs to be solved final answer but if it is with variables like a plus b plus c plus 2 and in that case since we don't know what is a b c we will be making this expression back from stack so we would have in fixed notation which is, which is written we convert it to binary then port face post fix and then from post fix we will put it to the stack and then if there are any variables used then there are not we will solve it and if there are we will convert it back to the infix well not the whole thing appear in exam they might give you one infix and they'll ask you to convert it to postfix they might give you postfix they'll ask to convert it to back to infix or solve it let's see how it happens let's say a multiply b a multiply b plus c minus d divided by e this is one of the expression we have to apply what what must to solve it we cannot solve it without it first of all what brackets so we will be solving what first a multiply b and then when we come to this expression we will be first solving d over e then the answer will be subtracted from C and both answers then will be added. So multiply A B. This P is for this bracket and then D multiply E. I mean divide. D divided by E. This or this one. Now its result will be subtracted from C. Why C on the left? Because C is on the left in original equation. Because C is on the left of this in original equation. If C would be on right, I would go this way. Understood? And now, this final result here and this final result here will be added together. This is the binary tree. So This is infix. This is the binary. Now we have to read it post order. Left, right, root. So we go left, we go left. This is the far more left. So A, your left solve will go, so you go right. B, and then it's root. Star. This is the left of this. So we go to the right, then left, C, then right, then left, D. Then write e, then root, divide, then minus, then plus. So we have to go with the border. A, then B, then multiply, then. C, then D, then E, then divide, then minus, then plus. So go with the border, never reach to the root. Okay, and as soon as you have and end note it down so all the way left whatever solved on the left who's right and then root that this is the left of this plus so we go on the right then c then d then e divide minus plus
Beating is also called traversing. Traverse. Beating it. Traversing. And then we will take this A. We'll put it in stack. Then B will put it in stack. As soon as we come across one operator, we will not put that operator in a stack. Rather, we take out two values, pop two values, the right operation called pop. So whatever comes out first will go on the right of the operator. Whatever comes, uh, comes out after will be on the left. So A multiply B. This will be solved. And we'll put back in stack. Afterwards, we put C and then D e and then E. Then comes divide. We will take out E, we will put on the right side of divide, and then we will put out, take out D and we will put on the left. And then this will be pushed back. Then we have minus. We'll take out D divided by E on the right side of minus, and then C on the left side of minus, and we will push it back. Then we have plus. As soon as we have plus, we will do this. Okay. So they will give you several empty stacks. You would have to put the data that way. A push. First, first of all, it was empty. Then A push, then B push. As soon as we come across with multiplication, we took out B and then A. Whatever comes first would go on the right. Whatever comes later would, go, would be on the left. And then it will be pushed back. All right. So A to B, then C comes pushed. Then D comes pushed. E comes pushed. And then comes division. We take out E, we put on the right side of division, then D on the left side of division, put it in the bracket and push it back. And then comes minus, this would become E to e, C minus D into D divided by E, pushed back, and then comes plus. This whole equation is then created. It was started with empty stack and ended at empty stack. Now, What are the practical implications of this reverse polish notation? Reverse polish notation expression can be processed directly from left to right. RPN is free from ambiguities. Ambiguities as in God marks. Does not require brackets. The user simply performs calculation in order that is required. I think the automatic stack store immediate results on the fly for the later use. There is no requirement for the precedence tools required in in fixed notation calculation occur as soon as an operator is specified whatever now there are these number of expressions let's solve these one by one So we have we have covered it all. Yeah. Computer does not recognize in order equation. It converts every in order equation to its equivalent post order equation. This conversion eliminates the uh, the complication in formation of the solution order. For example, in post order, there is no need of board mass implementation. Conversion from infix to other forms of notation is only possible through binary tree. That is, firstly, binary tree is made 
and then read in the different required order and orders are there we tried this up to chart these are those equations which i just shown all right so first of all there are no brackets so we go by bod mass then division where is division b divided by g so we will first divide b divided by g do you see any other division no then multiplication so multiplication we have got multiple multiplication so we will go by order left to right first we will multiply this means b over g multiply h and then this will further be multiplied with j multiplication done and then we have addition so we will go on the left and we will add what a and then subtraction this result will be subtracted obviously on the right because k exists on the right this is whole solution all right so be careful for left and right left and right left and right first division then multiplication then multiplication then addition on the left because a exists on the left and then subtraction all right now you have got these two solved 1 and 3 try 5 try 4 and 
done. All right, check it now. This is A multiply B multiply C. So A multiply B multiply C minus D. Over here, C over D, A plus B plus C over D. Why we have done this A plus B first? Because of the order. There are two additions. So we will do the first addition, which is on the far left. A plus B done plus C divided by D. That is how it will be done. Now, how it, it will be read? A, B, multiply, C, multiply, D minus. Over here, it would be A, B plus, C, D, divide, plus. You would have to practice it. These slides are uploaded. Now. So A, B plus, G, H, multiply, J, K, minus, multiply, divide. This is the whole same thing. First we push A, then we push B, then we have plus A plus B. It will be pushed back. Over A plus B, we will push G, and then H. Then we have multiply. We will take out H, and then G. Multiply them, push them back. Then we have J. We have K. As soon as we come across minus, we take out K, put on the right, J on the left. Uh, operate that, push it back. And then JK, then we have multiply, we take these two, put this on the right, this on the left, these two will be multiply, so that is how we put back. You might have as big question as this in exam. And now this is the question which does not have variables in it. These are all constants. Original question is this. 15 minus 10 multiply 15 over 3 plus 9 multiply 5. So as per the Bodmas rules, we will solve this and this first. And then we divide them. Whatever the result will be added to 5, the result will be multiplied to 5. So 15 minus 10. 15 divided by 3, they will both be divided. Then plus 9 and multiply 5. Then 15, 10 minus 15, 3 divide, divide 9 plus 5 multiply. 15 push, 10 push, minus shows up. We take out 10 and then we take out 15. The result is 5. This is pushed back. Then we push 15, then we push 3, divide shows up, we take out 3, put on the right, we take out 15, put on the left, these are solved, answer is 5, 5 is pushed back. So this 5 is the previous one, this 5 is the newer one. Then we have divide, we take out first 5, divide it with other 5, those two 5s are taken out, pushed back becomes 1. And then we have 9. We push 9 and then we have plus. We take out 9. We put on the right side of plus and then we take out 1. We push it on, sorry, we place it on the left side of plus. This becomes 10. 10 is pushed back. Then we have 5, five over 10. We pushed 5. And then we have multiply. We have taken 5, put it on the right of multiply. And then we have 10. We put it on the left of the multiply. Answer is 50. 50 is being used then. All right. I don't know, but there used to be a time when there were calculators, RPN calculator. They used to be called RPN calculators. I don't know if it is happens now. If it happens, if it does not. I don't know. All right. So these are all possibilities. There are video lectures for it. RPN. If you like to hear it back, watch it again. Now. These two topics are covered. Now let's cover these two topics. Your understanding of the various stages in compilation of a program. First of all, it is lexical analysis, then syntax analysis, then code generation, and then optimization.
every software which is compiled passes through all these stages at first stage it is language translators we have got several type of language translator for assembly language we have assembler for uh, high level languages we have compiler or interpreter interpreter is not discussed here it is just compiler interpreter as in the definition that we did earlier and assembler is not the concern over here so we are just trying to understand compilation so all right so whatever the code that you write is actually high level language okay it is actually what high level language first that code goes through the lexical analysis remember compilation is not done using one single software it is a collection of software the first software that does lexical analysis is called lexer it reads the code word by word this is word analysis it reads the code word by word it is word analysis so let's say this is our code it will read for then x then equal to then 1 then 2 then 10 then a then equal to word by word 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 by word when it passes lexer analysis phrases are checked for syntax the grammar of it if it is written correctly or it is not then we have semantic analysis semantic analysis means it is no more for the sentences it is for the code blocks that means does this next belong to any for if we have got no and if and we have if if we have got two and ifs and we have got one if we are sending the code somewhere which does not exist we are referring to a variable which does not exist so if it is anything which is beyond the limit of the line it is checked here in semantic analysis once all these human made errors are gone the stage is called intermediate language they might ask you what are the major stages of compilation or translation so you would have to tell that first stage is high level language second one is intermediate language third one is final machine language or object code machine language and object code are different but in your syllabus they are the same they will be considered as same once we reach to the intermediate language we will start code generating what is code generation code generation means converting of the intermediate language to its equivalent binary video lecture is uploaded as well okay all right so code is generated once the code is generated then it is optimized optimized lest we have made one instruction several times we have made one instruction several times so we don't need to recalculate it reexecute it again and again and then we optimize for the size sometimes we we optimize for the speed 
so we need to find a balance neither of these are in your syllabus you would not be asked to optimize a code you will not be asked to generate a code next this is very important this is just lexical analysis look at the commentary so your source code is then checked all the white spaces are removed white spaces are comments or remarks carriage returns enter in line feed going to the next line carriage return line feed apps and spaces all these are removed because these are not required then words are taken there is one table which is called keyword table this table is actually having all the keywords in it if keywords are not found it is unknown so those keywords which are not found in this keyword table will be placed in this table this is called symbol table all the variables are saved here the symbol table is random access table and variables are hashed over their names hashing is done over their names Symbol table holds what variables, their na names, their types, their scope, their size. But their name, type, scope, size, everything is not filled at the lexical analysis. Only names are filled. And if in hashing there would be any clashes, these clashes will be resolved using chaining technique. Keyword table is predefined by the language. All the keywords. So if it is not keyword, it is what a variable. so if it is not known it is unknown if it is unknown that means it is a variable it is an identifier whatever it is every keyword or word that we have if it is from the keyword table then its number is sent the number related to that you we know that everything by the computer is judged in terms of number those numbers for the keywords are predefined these are called tokens tokens are two bytes unsigned integers two byte unsigned integer this is what we have been doing if it is not signed it is not two's complement it is unsigned 1248 1632 and then 256 512 and 1024 what is the largest number that you can keep in two bytes Five thousand five hundred thirty-six. That is two to the power sixteen. Five thousand five hundred thirty-six. So these are tokens. So if it is a keyword, tokens are predefined. If it is not a keyword, tokens are then assigned. There is a past paper questions question that we would have to actually perform to understand it. okay so these tokens are generated if it is a symbol table and these are predefined so tokens are 16 bit unsigned integers and are output of the lexical analysis which is done by lexer and input of the syntax analysis syntax analysis software is called parser if the word is of just one character then its ascii is taken as its token so for multi characters the tokens are always greater than 128 because ascii covers up to 
ठीक है सो इफ यू रीड नोट दीज आर जस्ट फ्यू सेवन एट लाइन इन विच इट इज एक्सप्लेन बट देर माइट बी सेवरल क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम इट सो वट लेक्सर डज इट चेक्स एवरी वर्ड वट लेक्सर डज इट इग्नोर all the white spaces white spaces are what tabs tabs spaces comments enters next line whatever it is they all are ignored and only genuine words are taken if those words are out of this keyword table they are treated as keyword we know what keywords are right we have done peter and if they are not they will be treated as variables and there must be a separate symbol table for it symbol table is made at this stage but symbol table is only updated for its name names are actually hashed they are hashed they are hashed All right. Any question? Keyword name. Identifier will be fed to the hashing function. Hashing function will generate one address in the table. At that address, we will be noting it down. All right. And if there would be a clash. that clash will be resolved using chaining technique you will be studying hashing shortly okay so this was lexical analysis then it comes to syntax analysis syntax analysis is bakersnor form this is particularly very important syntax analysis is carried out using bakersnor form and then there is another way doing syntax analysis that is through diagram which is which is called syntax diagram so every single statement should be written according to the syntax of the particular programming language it is duty of the compiler to make sure that written syntax is in correct order to the parser's work of bakersnor form what is parser the software that does syntax analysis it is it is called what parser parser receives tokens as well the name of the parser and lexer are not part of your syllabus we will still be calling it syntax analysis and lexical analysis parser receives tokens from lexer as an output of the lexical analysis and as input for itself expectations in computer science 9608 are to check variable naming convention remember what na variable naming conventions are you cannot have special characters the length is of a, of a particular type is like that no space no nothing and second one is assignments the number which is being assigned to a variable if it is assigned correctly or not and constitution of literals you know what literals are name is equal to zafar and double quotation zafar and double quotation means it is literal a is equal to 5 5 is literal the value which is being assigned to the variable is called what literal constitution of literal assignment and variable naming convention these are what the expectation of cs 9608 how did i find out by looking into past paper questions otherwise it is not clear in the syllabus all that can be represented in bakersnor form can also be represented using graphical syntax diagrams now
pay attention to this back is not form syntax diagram examples a letter is defined as this colon colon and equal to is called defined as computer is looking at it in terms of numbers we are looking at it in terms of shapes letters words in particular form letter is defined as a this pipe means where do you see pipe over your keyboard to backslash hota hai backslash ke top pe if you press like shift backslash you see pipe this pipe means or a letter is defined as a or b or c or d or e matlab if it is written one letter it means it is either of them not many of them so if it is two letters they may be a and b but if it is single letter written it means that it is either of these not two of them then address is defined as a letter out of this a b c d and a colon whatever in double quotation would appear as is after letter and a letter and a digit this is with end if it is not with pipe it means that they should appear like they are this and this and this and this if there would be any option it would be or a pipe so this is end this is end so this 4c9 is actually complying with this syntax so this is a letter because it is out of these a b c d e a colon appears as is then a letter this this and digit is correct a99 is incorrect why it is incorrect because this 9 is not complying with this syntax because it says that a letter colon letter and digit this is like a letter colon digit digit any number any number of digits now this is very important this is called recursion 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 means in the definition of one token if you see the same identifier of the token again it means whatever adjacent to it may appear any number of time again this is very important in the definition of a token identifier this is the definition if you see the name again whatever adjacent to it may appear any number of time so a single digit may be 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 but if digit is followed by integer itself in the definition this means that it can be repeated any number of times an integer is defined as a digit or any number of integer an integer is defined as a digit or any number of digits so this one complies this 1 2 1 2 5 3 3 9 5 6 8 3 8 whatever they all are correct integers now let's see how it is in syntax diagram a letter is defined as either a or b or c or d these arrows are made in a way that one single letter can only be out of these a b c d e theek okay? hai it is either one of this so an address is defined as a, an address then a colon then letter and then the digit an integer is defined as as a single digit go out or take any number of turns any number of digits all right so you have to be careful with these arrows it says a variable name is defined as an alphabet character you you may see that these alphabet characters are from a to z one at a time a to z 
A variable name is defined as an alphabet character or alphabet character in two digits or an alphabet character and another alphabet character. This is not any number of al alphabet character. It is two alphabet characters. So a variable name is defined as an alpha alone. An alpha and digit digit, A23 would work. And digit is out of 0 to 9. And alpha alpha. B says the definition of the variable name is altered. A variable name is now defined as either an alpha followed by two digits, an alpha followed by two digits, where the first digit is non-zero digit. So you would have to come up with this non-zero digit yourself because this digit holds up on zero. So we have to make our non-zero digit. Means one to nine, it can be zero. We call it non-zero digit. So variable name is made up of alpha and alpha non-zero digit or digit. So it says that a variable name is defined as either an alpha followed by two digits where the first digit is non-zero digit. An alpha may be followed by two digits where the first digit is non-zero digit. And then or, here we go, or an unlimited set of alphabet characters means alpha variable name. You have to put this variable name by this alpha so that you could comply with an unlimited set of alpha characters. So I said that in the definition of an identifier, if the name of identifier appears, it means that whatever adjacent to it may appear any number of times. So this alpha may appear any number of times. Agar hum iska wo dekhe, syntax diagram, is ka, an alphabet. A variable name is an alpha followed by an alpha finished. A variable name is an alpha alone finished. This one. A variable name is an alpha digit digit finished. Here, a variable name is an alpha any number of alpha and then go out. Or a variable name is just an alpha and go out. A variable name may be alpha, non-zero digit, and digit. Understood? You would have to practice. There are so many questions related to this. Next question. A variable name is defined in a particular system as one or two letters. One or two letters. One, go out. Two, after one letter, take another, then go out. One or two letters. Followed by... Okay, any number of digits, so followed by any number of digits. A dollar sign if there are no digits, it means that if it is no digits, then just letter or one letter or two letter, get out, dollar sign, go up. Or an M percent or end sign if there are any digits. So if there are any digits, take this end sign and then go up. If there are no digits, go out, take this up. The syntax diagram. And if, although they have asked for syntax diagram, but we have to actually make uh, this Pakistan form as well. A variable name is either x and y with and or x with dollar. What is x? x is a letter or two letters? This why a digit or any number of digits. Why any number of digits? Because y appears alongside digit there. This is any number of digits. What is x? A single letter or two letters? X. This is x. If it is digits and end, then y, which is digits, any number of digits and end. Go out or just x and dollar. X is one digit or two digits. You would have to practice so that you could grab the idea. There are so many questions. At the website, you may see all these questions in topicals. Alright? 